Um, morning everyone, um, thank you for joining us and welcome to I believe it's our third Facebook Live. So we're going to be looking at um, a Welsh needle exchange today. Uh, my name is Ray, uh, bear with me, it's the first time I've done a Facebook Live. Um, so needle exchange was set up to um, provide harm reduction information, to reduce the risks of things like bloodborne viruses, uh, produce, pr reduce overdose deaths um, and to prevent things like needle litter as well. So, uh, Kim, if you can give us a quick uh, spin in the room. So, as you can see, we've got lots of information on the walls, lots of handouts, and generally lots of harm reduction info for anyone who needs it. There we go. That's probably quite zoomed in, I should imagine now. <laughs> so, um, in a needle exchange, obviously, uh, we do hand out. Uh, clean needles. So if I show you some of the stock that we've got, so we've got things like separate needles, separate barrels, all-in-ones for all kinds of um, injecting drug users, so from opiates, amphetamine users, um, to steroid users as well, which take up about, I'd say, half of our, uh, our client group as well. Um, and the important thing to remember as well, it's not just about handing, in, um, handing out clean needles, it's about getting rid of used needles, preventing needle litter on the streets, and also, rather than just the transaction, giving that bit of harm reduction advice as well. Finding out if someone's in treatment, to find out what their injecting practices, giving them safer injecting advice, um, see if they've had any sort of bloodborne virus testing, um, and find out if they've got some, like, I think Kim's already done this, naloxone. So, great for overdose awareness and overdose intervention as well. Um, I'm just going to look at my notes, bear with me. So, Discussing these like confidentiality, the needle exchange is a very confidential service. Um, service users don't have to give a great deal of information, um, just basically their initials, date of birth, substance they're using, and things like the, the, the bloodborne virus um, sort of status. So, um, have they been tested? Have they been vaccinated? Uh, and we can sort of like challenge that, well, not challenge, we can give advice then, sorry, on um, whether that testing needs to be updated. Um, and whether um, they need to sort of like look at vaccinations for things like hepatitis A, hepatitis B. Uh, we can also sort of put them in touch then with specialist drug services like CDAT. We can talk whether they are in treatment, are they prescribed, have they thought about being prescribed. We can encourage them into the rest of our service at Barrod then, drop in, family team and um, one to one sort of brief interventions, harm reduction as well. Um, Kim, have you got any questions you'd like to? So how would people find out about um, more local, their own local services? Where would people get that information from, opening times and things like that? You can access the Barrod Facebook page, which should have all the opening times on there. Um, you can also uh, speak to pharmacies as well, who should have the information regarding um, our needle exchange too, along with the services that we offer. Um, other sort of advice we can give as well is, I think Kim showed the poster when you came in, was the, the water risks. So we can give advice on the best type of water that they should be using. We do hand out things like sterile water as well um, to prevent, whoops, let me get this open. Again, to prevent infections rather than using any sort of risky water, like powder water and things like that. Um, obviously, the big reason why needle exchanges are a good thing, it not only helps the service user, but it helps the rest of the public as well. It gives someone, uh, someone a confidential service where they can come and bring their used needles rather than just sort of leaving them in the street or putting them in the bin. They can bring them here, we can get rid of them. And again, give that bit of uh, intervention, that bit of advice, encourage them for a cup of tea. And we may be the first and only people who might ask that person how they're doing that day. Are they looking after themselves? Um, what their injecting sites are like? We might be able to direct them towards even things like housing as well, to signpost them to services they might not have even thought of. They might be rough sleeping. We can put them in touch with um, other agencies and like Shelter Camry as well and signpost them in the right direction. So you told us a little bit about the information someone needs to give when they first come in, which, you know, sounds brilliant. People can come in anonymously and, you know, get the support they need. 
Are there any times when you would need to break confidentiality? Of course, if there's something like a child protection issue, or if we feel that that person's a risk for themselves or somebody else, that would be. And the other time as well is, if, for example, if a young person is, um, is accessing the service, someone who uh, may be under 16 or under 18, um, we can get a young person's worker in then to do that piece of work with them and find out um, if they need to be accessing the young person's service and encourage them into that as well. So, if there's any questions, feel free to find them this way. Okay, we're not getting any comments at the moment from lots of thumbs up, which is great, but we're not getting any questions at the minute. So rather than awkwardly stare at Ray, <laughs> I'm going to put it off now. But we will be available um, to respond to direct comments and questions um, via the Facebook page. Ray, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you for your time.